Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Uh, so you're still watching The Breakfast Show and uh, continuing our uh, discussion uh, regarding uh, climate change and uh, env the environmental preservation. And this, of course, uh, comes uh, as uh, President Fatah Sisi heads to France to uh, attend the One Ocean Summit dedicated to discuss uh, maritime issues. And this year's summit focus focuses uh, rather on uh, preserving uh, marine biodiversity, fighting pollution, and the adverse effects of climate change on seas and oceans. And to shed more light on this topic, we're most delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Maha Sobhi, and she's an environmental expert. A very good morning, uh, Dr. Mahan. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast Show. How are you? Uh, Dr. Maha, first of all, if you can uh, tell us about the importance of uh, the partici Egypt's participation and uh, President Fatah Sisi uh, heads uh, to uh, France to attend the One Ocean Summit and uh, tackling, of course, uh, the uh, uh, maritime issues and, of course, uh, preserving uh, the marine biodiversity and uh, fighting pollution. Well, first of all, good morning, and thank you so much for having me uh, today. And um, I'm so glad that you're highlighting such an important topic. Um, I am so proud of Egypt for taking this initiative, first of all. And the fact that we're hosting the UN Climate Conference this year is fabulous, and it's one step right uh, in the right direction. And I'm hoping that this highlights the importance of the matter uh, to Egyptians and the continent as well. And although Africa produces a much lower greenhouse gas relative to other continents, it will be hit hard by climate change. Um, speaking about biodiversity and marine life, it's so important to realize that raising, uh, the rising temperatures in the oceans due to climate change and that the fact that 30% of carbon dioxide produced by humans is absorbed by the ocean this will have direct effect on the marine life and our ecosystems. And not only that, it will also affect our tourism levels. Uh, the coral reef industry is a $36 billion industry per year. And the consequences could lead to a near 95% loss of income in the next 50 to 100 years. Oh, the, these uh, numbers are uh, indeed uh, shocking, uh, Dr. Maha. And uh, also, uh, uh, picking on what you just said, uh, how do you see uh, Egypt and the COP27, of course, Egypt's hosting COP27 in the city of uh, love and peace, uh, Sharm el Sheikh? Uh, how do you see the uh, preparations uh, so far led by Egypt uh, uh, in anticipation of holding the COP27 uh, later in November this year? Well, again, the fact that they're putting tremendous uh, marketing behind this uh, event is fantastic. And it's not just for Egyptians and North Africa. It's for including all of Africa as a nation, uh, as, a, as a, a continent, sorry. Uh, we really need to stand together to fight against climate change because uh, our continent will be hit very, very hard. Uh, already we suffer from really high temperatures in the weather, which has direct consequences on water, water shortages, uh, rising temperatures, food scarcity. So, yes, the, the, the fact that the Egyptians are really, uh, the government is really backing <clears throat> this initiative, um, it's fantastic. Um, and not only that, just leading up to this conference and the fact that Egypt, uh, the Egyptian government is working so hard on trying to use renewable energy. For example, um, Egypt has installed several wind farms, such as the one in Zafarano, or also the solar parks that have been inaugurated in Benben Solar Park, hoping to become the largest uh, photovoltaic power station in the world and hoping that by 2030, Egypt aims to use 42% of its energy from renewable resources. So the fact that we're not only uh, hosting the climate conference, but we're actually taking action towards reducing climate change makes me such a proud Egyptian today. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, Dr. Meha, and uh, also I would like to um, know your uh, comments uh, on the uh, challenges uh, facing Egypt um, so far when it comes to climate change and uh, all its uh, repercussions and uh, how can we uh, overcome them? 
Well, one of the major consequences of climate change, I would say, that will directly affect Egypt is focused on water. Uh, number one being water uh, shortages. Um, I just have to say that uh, that this will directly affect agriculture, which is one of the biggest employers uh, regarding sectors within Egypt, and it employs around 30% of all employment. And climate change will lead to 47% reduction in agriculture, leading to around 49% uh, of unemployment. And these figures come from the UNDP, and they're shocking. Um, already, farmers are complaining of water shortages in the northern delta as Nile's reduced flows uh, uh, struggles to filter through clogged up irrigation channels which means that due to the, the waste that we throw into the, the Nile, and you have to also understand that the Nile doesn't just start in Egypt. It flows through other countries to get to us. So the buildup of waste until it reaches us reduces the water that we have, and directly affecting uh, employment, directly affecting um, the quality of our food that we produce, um, we're a population of over 100 million people. And yes, the number indeed, is only uh, Dr. Maha uh, Sophie, uh, environmental expert. We really appreciate your insight and thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast Show. And dear viewers, on this note, we end today's episode of The uh, Breakfast Show. Uh, just a quick recap of what we discussed. We talked about positivity and we also talked about climate change and uh, President Afetah Hassisi's uh, attendance uh, for uh, or heading to France to attend the One Ocean Summit. You're in the company of myself, Karim Gamaleddin, and my colleague, Dina Hussain. Until we meet again, this is goodbye.